Most of us who grew up in the 50s and 60s with music, when it came to guitars, we took what we could get. And, and we were happy about that. There were several major companies. There were a bunch of minor companies. If you were a beginner and intermediate, if you were a full-time professional, you got lots of guitars to choose from, and everybody was happy. When the guitar boom happened and they were trying to make as many guitars as possible, the quality kind of slipped, and it was like Fender was bought up by another company, Gibson was bought by another company, and it got farther and farther removed from people who were actually playing. We noticed as players that the guitars that the big companies were making in the 70s, they really didn't have the quality of the instruments that had been made previously. And fairly soon after that, people began to perceive a loss. And so by 71, 72, I think a lot of us wondered if perhaps the, the best years of the electric guitar were behind us. I'm Joel Danzig, and I started Hamer Guitars in 1973. I met the guys, uh, it was Paul Hamer and Joel Danzig, I met them in, uh, at Northern Prairie Music. I was uh, playing in a band and uh, also dealing vintage instruments. Most guitar dealers were players, you know, because you had to really know what was good and what bad with an instrument in order to deal. This is actually before vintage guitars were called vintage guitars. They were just uh, used guitars to most people. Back in, in that time, there were very few vintage shops. So what people who would buy and sell those guitars would usually bring them down to a show. The show was in town because the major people who were interested in them were working musicians. We'd stand outside the auditorium theater and wave a 1959 Les Paul at a tour bus and uh, of course the guys would tell their tour manager, let those guys in. <laughs> We were selling them the old Gibson instruments, the old Fenders that they weren't making anymore. So if you played in the Chicago area, Joel would be one of the guys who'd come down with a, you know, some kind of vintage piece, a Les Paul, you know, a Strat, you know, something interesting. You know, we were dealing with Martin Barr, Andy and Anderson of Jethro Tull, Jan Ackerman of Focus, a lot of the early rock musicians. They had this, the same kind of instruments that I was interested in uh, collecting. Flying Vs, Gibson Explorers, uh, Telecasters, Stratocasters. The older guitars sounded better and they, they played better. We all liked the, the Gibson uh, Sunburst, Les Paul standard. Because we were restoring guitars and repairing the older guitars, we started to really gain a lot of expertise at how they were made. Not only uh, how to make them better, but also what about them wasn't made correctly and how they can be improved. This naturally led to building our own instruments. At one time in 75, he brought this colored picture of this guitar that was kind of a mix of a Gibson Explorer and a 59 Les Paul Sunburst, which was like the most desirable of the vintage guitars. That's the guitar everybody wanted. We started building a guitar for Rick Nielsen really early. I think he has number uh, 004. It took so long to build the number four guitar for him that we felt bad about it, and so we gave him the first prototype, which is 0000. He still has that guitar. It's the Sunburst one that he's really identified with. This is the very first one. If you notice, the, the knobs are straight up and down as opposed to an angle that uh, after the very first one they start to angle them. And that's actually uh, has a, a curly maple top on top of uh, the actual body and it's got binding in it. And it doesn't actually have binding on the, on the neck which then they put on later. And at that time there was nobody doing anything quite like that. You know, it's either you bought old guitars or you suffered through new guitars. There were, there were no small makers. Hamer was very much part of changing the way players look at our guitars and look at the manufacturers who build them. I think most guitarists were used to buying off-the-shelf models from Fender and Gibson and here comes this upstart company making you know a very high-end guitar in limited numbers. They were keeping all that was good about guitars came up to that point that they were adding these new innovations. To I, it. I think I recall an ad that they had at one point it said modern vintage 
You really need to know what makes it tick for a player. They're modern guitars, but with with vintage appointments. They learned how to make guitars. I think that was the that was the one they learned on. When Joel and his workers started building guitars, they were really young, and they wanted to take the quality of the old school, but marry that to the thinking of progressive modern instruments. Our thought was, why pay $3,000 for a vintage guitar that can be stolen or broken and it's not replaceable? Why not come to us and have us make a guitar for you that plays like a vintage guitar, looks like a vintage guitar, and sounds like a vintage guitar for half the cost? It was a very small group of people who were interested in the old guitars, right? And a small group of people who were using these guitars for live performance. Because I always just played vintage guitars, but now this one's uh, with Billy Squire when I was playing with them. This is the early 80s. And then I, um, it sort of came around time, around 82 or so, that that Floyd Rose guitars, um, you know, guitars with tremolo units and then more powerful pickups, like this heavier thing started happening that, that I wasn't getting from the vintage instruments. And that's when I really started to uh, connect with Hamer because I needed something new, but they still kept firmly based in, in you know, the traditions um, of guitar. When you get used to playing those sort of old classic sort of instruments that feel like a, an old pair of uh, shoes or something that feel so comfortable to replace them is really quite a big deal so obviously the replacement has to be really quite something special you know well if you want to buy the vintage guitar these new hammers are a lot less than that they're going to cost you more than the new guitars by those companies we grew up with and love um, but they're going to cost a lot less than the vintage guitars. But what I think is really cool about Hamer is that they they want to uh, uh, pay tribute and, and honor to the traditions of, of, of guitars built in the early periods, but also try to develop something that's new and, and innovative so that they have a personality, and that's one thing I really like about them. It's kind of a winning formula. If you, if you put those elements with uh, an instrument that has the right electronics, and has the, the right weight and balance, and uh, has the tone someone wants to get, then you've got an instrument that is just going to sell itself. People said, you know, you're right, these are great. I can feel it, I can hear it, I can tell it when I play it. That success, I think, allowed them over a period of years to say, okay, we're players, we're creative, we can do things beyond uh, channeling this vintage guitar aesthetic. Let's do something new. Let's do something no one's really seen before. Like this guitar has got a painting on it by Tony Fitzpatrick. And at that time he was he was painting birds. He was doing a whole series of paintings of birds. And um, that's how this uh, came to be. In the late 70s to 80s, you had people inventing things like Floyd Roses and experimenting with different shapes of the, you know, the, 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 the peg head and, and crazy finishes. And now it seems like people are getting back to the old, the old style of guitar building. This is my newest. It's called the Junior. And um, I don't know, I just love this one. This is my favorite new guitar. Big players, once they've, they've played solid body guitars for a number of years, there is a logical desire to want to play an arch top. Uh, Archtop, P90s, uh, Bigsby, it has that old box, vintage, you know, jazz guitar sound and 